Good evening, and welcome to Television Theater. Our story this week goes under the handle called The Pencil Man. Few men have known such secluded isolation. What's going to happen here at this house in the next couple of hours is almost surely to change the lives of several people. That's right, friends. The mood's been set, and something's gonna happen. That's for sure. It's May 1st, 1984. It's mid-morning in Bearden, Arkansas. My teacher wants to buy five pencils. Pencils? One dime. What's your name, son? Jamie. I never heard of a boy named Jamie before. Here, Mr. Pencil Man. What we got? One dollar? Two? It's a one dollar bill, sir. Young man? You don't know me but a half dollar. You don't know me but a half dollar. <whistles> now, hon, pick out five of my best ones now. Don't get all of my yellow ones now. I bite the little baby doll if that kid come back by here with it. Martin. What about this warm September weather? I don't know. It looks like it might start thundering. Ha! 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 Why wear that hot coat? Hot? I just got done scolding two trees for fighting over a dog. Ha! Ha ha! Appleton, two more shut-off notices here for you. The preacher and him's handling all my business now. Drop my mail over in the church box if you want to. If I'd have drawed your hand, I'd throw mine away. If and I had my eyesight back, there wouldn't be nothing left for you but some corn silk and a few peanut holes. I'd just pick at you, Mr. Maplewood. The Lord's in my corner, son. Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! 
Do I smell ice cream? Martin? You just kill me. Ha! Ha ha! Ha! Ha ha! I'm taking care of you, cuz. I love all my brethren. Even those who done me wrong. May the Lord be with you, son. Could you let me have a couple of your best pencils on the critic? Well, boy, help yourself. We can't carry money on our routes, you know. Hell, boy, pay me half of it when I die, and the other half when I come back. Ha! Ha ha! I ain't gonna rob you blind. May the Lord be with you, son. Bubba, I ain't going to rob you blind. He, he, he took me into stuff. Our mailman's a cheesehead, our mailman's a cheesehead, our mailman's a cheesehead. May I have your attention, please? Every day around noon, the preacher's wife, Miss Caitlin O'Kay, takes over our poor blind man a plate lunch and quite often reads to him out of the Old Testament. please what's happened here man don't hit me his sister okay I'm just a poor blind man and don't bother nobody that blame mail carrier made them shovel there a purpose Made them shovel there a purpose. Oh, but 
Martin could never do a thing like that, Mr. Maplewood. Do you feel I've been a victim of mental cruelty? Our father says we're not to judge. That mail carrier just files up my mail. Some folks I know don't like people what can't take up for themselves. That blame mail carrier hit me in the back with a lock. Ah, uh, I try to get along with all of them. What color is that medicine? Green. Uh huh. That's my worstest color. You know Bert Reynolds? Everybody knows him. Bert's worshipped me since he was this high. I need to get my knee operated on. That's why I walk like I do. Now, Miss Caitlin, it ain't your place to wait on me hand and foot. I gave away 41 pencils here this morning, just out of the goodness of my heart. I always enjoy doing nice things for people, and I love everybody so. The Lord gonna take care of his own. The Lord gonna take care of his own. What kind of community have I come to here? We had hoped to see more of you in church, Mr. Maplewood. I'm ashamed. I listen to church over the TV. How long has it been since you've seen the light of day, Mr. Maplewood? I've been this way since I was a small, small child. And I can't even afford my own tin cup. <laughs> you made me laugh. A disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall serve as his master. I still think about the time Aunt Doris Ruby stepped out of her night clothes, a woman her age. Was she naked? How? How old was your aunt when? Twenty-nine. A healthy built woman. Don't let this fast talk fool you. I ain't much of a ladies man. I ain't much of a ladies man. Do you like to kiss? I can see. You're a lonely man. Miss Caitlin, I've been denied so much. My onlyest pleasure is when I'm asleep. In dreams. Appleton, I don't know what to say. I'll never see another sunset. Or see small children at play. I may never experience the bouncy feel of a real woman. I'll charm you if I have to. Brother OK told me not to. I've got to go. Would you like to get the juice in my cup near the icebox? Set them here for me, please. I need to get my knee operated on. That's why I walk like I do. I always enjoy doing nice things for people, and I love everybody so. The Lord going to take care of his own. Oh, I just know you're soaked. Chuck your wet clothes off, old girl. Look, it's streaming all over your clothes. All in the world I want is to hear some panties fall.
Don't make me coax. I can't do that. Is somebody in this room? You don't trust me? With my handicap, what could it hurt? I'm leaving, and I will tell my husband what I was said here today. Look, look here. I got 20, 10, 10, 20. Your husband ain't the only man in Bearden with a pocket full of money. <sighs> you filthy mouth man! Well... Hell! Well, I've never. We were wrong about you. I'm leaving Bearden for the buzzard. No, wait. You don't want to leave your home. My home. Some Christians moving me into this rat hole of a dump. You led us to believe you lived comfortably here. Gee, think. It sleeps 25 comfortably. And to think, I was almost ready to obey the gospel. I'm gone. Sister animal help. Well, don't run tell your husband. He'll go. He'll go. He'll whoop my ass off. She ain't got a brain. Listen to me, please. May I have your attention, please? By now, ten minutes have gone by, friends. And the preacher has just received word on how shabbily his wife has been treated. Reverend O.K. is headed over right now to talk to the blind man.
Often. You and me need to have a little talk. I'm busy. Whose disguise are you wearing? Mine. Did you upset my wife? What in the world did you do? Your wife comes over here smelling like a drunkard. Oh! Oh, no! No! Do you believe she drinks beer? Hell, man! She tried to choke me to death. You are kidding. What kind of a person would do something like that? Your wife told me an ugly word. The Lord marks each sparrow's fall. She done tried to talk me into the notion and nurse her. Are you sure you don't enjoy making things up? George Washington couldn't tell a lie. I can, but won't. That's not so cute. That's sick. They tell me you've been a kicking up your heels too, Mr. Judas Jr. Our Bible teaches us to not know a wicked person. There's rumors all over Bearden about you and Mr. Percy. Fibber? Storyteller? Black liar! Bull! Percy, don't even date! This is ridiculous. Look at all our young folks just up to meanness and foolishness and wickedness. Preachers always want money, want money. More money. I dislike that tone. Mr. Maplewood, I so deplore your conduct. Is there a reindeer standing yonder? Rudolph. 
don't do that to me anymore. You stay away from my wife. I'll be preaching both of y'all a funeral. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. Threat. Threat. Oh, no, no, don't eat me up, Mr. Wolf. You drunk, sop, suck. Appleton, be out of bearding by Friday. He'll believe anything in women's tells him. Give me Huntsville, Alabama. Collect. Collect. Hello? I'll accept the charges. I hope you ain't in jail again. Where's Uncle Eben? I'm not dealing with you. He's over at the Barbara shop. I had me a girl, but she done me wrong. She made up to her preacher. Why have you called us? That preacher too old for her, and looked like a little old midget. I need to get myself back out in the garden now. Hey, Mamie Lou, I'd like to see you and be with you all. This is a bad time. Remember all that farm equipment we bought? Yeah, that's the day we had soup for dinner. Open up that field gate before you know it. Oh, nephew will be sliding in home. How will I manage to hide such happiness? <laughs>